Greetings and welcome to the introduction to physical science. In this video, we are going to talk about the nuclear fission simulator that we use for the labs in one of my physical science classes. So if you come to this screen, let's go ahead and press play to start it. Now this is a little bit different than many of the others that I use, because you'll see it'll come up here. And what you want to do is the browser compatible version. You can download the old Java version. I think this is much easier, which will let it run directly in your browser and we'll work on more devices. So you got to give it a moment to load up here and it is going to take a second to get the simulator and emulator and then you will see the standard uh, simulator here the screen and there's three different sections that we're going to be look at looking at first we're going to look at one nucleus we'll look at a chain reaction and we'll look at a nuclear reactor as an example. So what we see here is what we have is our little gun here which can fire neutrons at a different at an atom and in this case an atom an isotope of uranium and this is uranium 235 and you notice by it moving around there that it is not a stable isotope so it can very easily fall apart. When we see the energy here, the energy diagram, as it splits apart, it's kind of in a balance here. So it will stay in this energy well. But if you give it a little bit more energy, it can actually gain energy split apart into two pieces that will be separate, that will be completely separate. And that's how we gain energy from a nuclear fission reactor. So let's look at what we can do here. So if we shoot this, we fire it, we make uranium-236, which is unstable, and then completely split apart into two daughter nuclei. So we're just sending one neutron into that, and that makes it completely an unstable atom and lets us split it into two of the daughter nuclei. Now, we can look at it with one because one atom doesn't do a whole lot. What is really interesting is when we start looking at chain reactions. So here again, we just have one atom to start, but we can add some more. So let's add a bunch of uranium-235 here. Pick a number, however you want to add it. And let's add a little bit of uranium-238 scattered around. So we'll start with 50 nuclei there, 40 uranium-235s and 10 uranium-238s. Well, let's go ahead and aim our gun here at one of these uranium-235s and fire. And what happens? Well, we start a chain reaction because in each of those cases, neutrons are released. And those neutrons can then interact with other atoms and continue the reaction. Now, eventually it will run out. Now, normally, of course, there are a lot more than just 50 nuclei there. There would be tons of them. But what you see is that you have some of the original uranium-238 and uranium-235 there, and you have some uranium-239. Again, it's not a stable isotope, but it is not as unstable as the uranium-235, which converts to 236. So it kind of just remains there. Let's reset and look at that again. What happens if we just shoot a uranium-238 nucleus? Nothing. That one electron was just absorbed, became part of the uranium-239, and it's done. So it's only when you hit the uranium-235. Now, the more uranium-235 you have relative to uranium-238, the stronger the reaction will be. And let's take a look at that. What if we put a lot of uranium-238, but very little uranium-235? What will happen? Well, let's shoot at our uranium-235 here. And watch that we only got a couple because neutrons are quickly absorbed and do not make it to the other scattered uranium-235. So in order to have fuel, this is enriching the fuel. When we use uranium fuel, we have to enrich it, increase the percentage of the uranium-235 relative to the more common uranium-238. Now let's look at our last one here and we can look at the nuclear reactor portion. Nuclear reactor, we have the control rods that you can slide in and out and you can fire neutrons at these. And here we have all of the uranium in the nuclear reactor. So if we fire neutrons when the control rods are in, what happens? Well, you get a reaction or two and you're done because the control rods are specifically designed to be very good at absorbing neutrons. So it kills the chain reaction and slows down the reactions. Let's reset and start it again. What if we take the control rods completely out? 
And now we fire the neutrons. Well, let's watch what happens. Now the chain reaction goes, the power output is increasing, and the amount of energy we have produced is increasing. So that will continue. Now, if we wanted to slow down that reaction, we can put those control rods back in. They absorb a lot of the neutrons and will slow down and eventually stop the reaction. Note the power output decreasing down there. So this is how a nuclear reactor is controlled. We use the control rods which absorb the neutrons to adjust how quick we want the reactions to go. When more power is needed, you have less of the control rods in. When you need less power, you put more of the control rods in and slow down the nuclear reactions. So that concludes this video on the nuclear fission simulator that we will be using for one of our labs. We'll be back again next time to look at another one of our lab simulators. So until then, have a great day everyone, and I will see you in class.